Hi everyone, so in this video I'm going to be sharing with you the process that I like to use when painting realistic cat ears. The tips, techniques and processes that I'm showing here can be applied for any big cat as well, you know, tiger, lion, jaguar, anything like that. For me, I tackle it in the same way. So when painting any cat ears, my first step is to make sure I've got the shape of the ear accurate. So you can see that I'm moving the brush fairly carefully and it's nice and slowly. That's to make sure that I'm paying really close attention to the reference photo and that I'm getting all of these curves and the general shape of the ear right. So my first biggest tip is notice that the top of the ear isn't pointed. It's not triangular. There is a really nice curve to the top of that ear. So that's really important. Making these ears triangular is going to give it a bit more of a, a fake and, and like an unrealistic look. So do make sure that you're studying that reference photo closely. So once I've got the shape of the ear right, what I then start to do is really focus on my base foundation. So here I'm starting to try and replicate that concave shape of the ear. If you imagine this cat sat in front of you, the middle portion of the ear is further away because the two outer edges curve towards the viewer. So this is the shape of the ear that I'm trying to replicate. Now in order to achieve that 3D shape of the ear, it's all in the lighting and where you place your lights and your darks. If you look at that reference photo in the corner, you can see that the middle portion of the ear is darker and the two edges are lighter. Now this is gonna become more apparent in my painting as I start to build up my layers, but you can still see here that I'm gradually reinforcing where those highlights and shadows are positioned. One of the biggest mistakes that happens with any ear of this shape is we don't make the base layers dark enough. So when we come to put those lighter, longer details on top, they're not going to show up as well because the base layer underneath isn't dark enough. You don't have that contrast there to make the tiny white wispier hairs look three dimensional and further in front and closer to the viewer. So when I'm working with acrylics, regardless of whatever it is that I'm working from, I will always work from dark to light. But this is more so the case with something like this because I need my base layers to be nice and dark. So before we start building on these details, I would just like to ask if the tips and techniques that I've shared here are useful, I'd really appreciate it if you could give the video a thumbs up because it really does help tell YouTube that it's of interest and they'll then you know, show it to other people. This is also available on my Patreon channel as a real-time tutorial, so if you would like to follow along to that, the reference photo, line art and my material list are provided and I will link my Patreon in the description below. So on to the details. Now I break my details up into individual layers. I want to be here focusing on what's closer to the back of the ear first and then building up from there. I like to use a range of different brushes. So I've got some rake brushes. They're also called grass comb brushes, but they do exactly the same thing. And then here I'm using my liner and rigger brushes. Now the reason why I like to use different brushes for different layers is because it helps to build more realism in the fur that you're painting. If the same brush is used for the first layer all the way up to those finer details, then you're going to have the issue where all the details start to look the same and then the fur texture will look the same. Whereas with this, it's very different to the fur that's on the face. You'll also notice that I'm working on the fur that's on the edges first. I'm not painting those lovely long details because they overlap everything else. Just like whiskers, and I talk about this on all of my YouTube tutorials, those details that overlap everything else need to be left until the last layer. If I start painting those in now, all of these tiny hairs that I'm currently working on that are behind those longer hairs, I'm then going to have to paint around those longer hairs. It's not going to then look the same. You might then have some of these hairs that are overlapping the longer hairs, which are going to tell the viewer that those details are sitting in front and on top. And again, that's just not going to help to build up that 3D shape of the ear. Always be looking at that reference photo and painting whatever is behind something first. So in the real time version of this tutorial on Patreon, because it is significantly slower, I'm able to really show how to move that brush in order to create the type of details that I'm going for here. But when using a liner or a rigger brush, there is a fine balance between the consistency of the paint. You want to add enough water so that the paint flows off of these bristles nice and easy. If you're using this brush and you have a lot of start and stop points, that's a really good indication that you don't have enough water in your mixture. 
it's not quite thin enough in order to create that full brush stroke. On the other hand, if it's far too transparent and you're starting to see those base layers through those details or the paint is actually running, then that's a really good indication that you do have far too much water in that um, paint versus water consistency. And then you need to add more paint to thicken that up. So I very rarely turn my artwork round because of where I'm recording for the tutorials. It's just something that I don't like to do. However, in these cases, it's actually really beneficial in order to get the right angle on the painting and how you're using that brush. So if you're finding it difficult to move your wrist in order to drag that brush across to create these nice long lines, then just turn your artwork round. You're going to find it much easier. Now when I'm working with liner or rigger brushes, I do like to use a range of sizes. So usually I've got two or three on the go at the same time, depending on the type of fine line that I'm trying to create. When you're creating these longer lines, you're gonna wanna get something that's a little bit bigger, something that's able to hold a bit more of that paint. Quite often it's thought that the smaller liner or rigger brushes are easier to get these longer lines, but it's actually the opposite. Because they're not able to hold the same amount of paint, you end up having to keep on reloading and then having those start and stop points within the one same detail. And again, that's going to make it look not realistic. So the longer bristles like what I'm working with here, because of the larger size of the liner brushes, would be my preference for these kinds of details for the inner ear. So this is now more of that second layer of detail and I've started to add more of my lighter coloured paint to my mixture. I'm still not focusing on those brightest details yet, I'm still building up my layers gradually. Now the one thing here that I'm really wanting to focus on is the way that they change direction. Notice how they don't all curve in the same way. Some of them are curved down towards the lower left corner while the others are more just generalised to the left side. So this is going to really help to build up that natural variation and going to give even more realism to the painting. Something that I focus a lot on during my Patreon tutorials is colour. Now colour is something that we all can stress about but we really don't have to, especially when working with acrylics. As you can see here I am using glazes now to change the colour of the details. Trying to mix the exact shade of the colour that we're after when working on those details at the time can really slow down the painting process and it can make us, you know, the process less enjoyable, which would be a real shame. The reason why we do these paintings is because it's therapeutic, we enjoy doing them. But colour mixing, colour selection, how to identify a colour in a reference photo are all things that can really cause us to hesitate throughout the process. So again, this is something that I focus a lot on during the Patreon versions. As you can see, I'm just tinting this colour now, reinforcing my contrast, all with the use of glazes. And if you would like to see how I use these glazes throughout this entire cat painting, I do have the slower time-lapse version with a voiceover here on YouTube. So if that's of interest, I'll link that in the description below. Here's a photo of the finished painting and I really hope the tips and techniques that I've shared here are useful. As I've mentioned, if you could give the video a thumbs up if it was, then I would really appreciate that because it really does make a difference. If you'd like to get notified of future content that I upload, hit the subscribe and the bell button. If you've got any art related questions, pop them in the comments below. I am more than happy to help if I can and I'm going to be uploading another video in the next couple of days.